This neat little thing is a really increasingly popular item on eBay and it's a sort of neon look-alike star. Now, I've always said that if you want the look of neon, then go for neon because nothing beats neon. But there are a lot of uh, LED materials that try to emulate the style of neon. And they're not perfect. They don't uh, suit all applications, but they, they do actually look pretty good. I'll plug this one in and you can see it. And you'll see this puts out a nice linear beam of light, a bit of flicker because this one is mains powered. And it's got a sort of channel at the back. I've featured this in a different video, but it lets you bend it quite tightly this way, but it won't let you bend it the other way easily. So it's perfect for flat objects, much like this star. And that seems to be what they've used. At this point in the video, I should explain the reason that I'm wearing these majestic, some, what someone described once as wizard sleeves. There's a joke in there. Uh, the reason I'm wearing these, this is a what they call a quilted overall in the UK. It's a Dickies quilted overall. It's very good. It's un unusual that compared to a lot of other sort of uh, UK workwear, the Dickies stuff is actually quite generously sized. It goes up to big sizes. And this one is actually almost too big, but it lets you pull your hand right in when it's cold. So I quite like these. I should actually uh, push them up and just clip this, the press studs to keep the sleeves out of the way. I should mention at this point that Dickies UK is nothing like Dickies America. The clothing is completely different. You can buy proper Dickies clothing here, but uh, it's just a brand. A lot of it seems to be made in China. So this uh, is a low voltage version of that. And it's interesting that it's got a plastic frame and then it looks as though it's got that same material in a miniature format. And it comes with a battery pack, which I fitted with three rechargeable cells. And I could turn it on right now. You won't see it so easily because uh, it's not super bright compared to the bench lighting. But uh, it is acceptably bright as an ornamental level. But you can also plug it into a USB port. And uh, if I just bring in this USB power supply, and I plug uh, the little analyzer in, and I plug this in, it draws, the 5 volts, it draws about 200 milliamps. And it is a bit brighter at the, on the 5 volts. Now, it's worth mentioning, watch the current here. I don't know if you're going to see that. At the moment, it's saying 190 milliamps. But if I turn the battery pack on, it shoots up to, ooh, uh, 600 milliamps. Actually, it's peaked at 600. Now it's gone down to about 540 and the reason for that is because the battery pack just has a 10 ohm resistor between it and the LEDs. And when you plug it into a USB power supply, if the battery pack's turned on, it will try and charge the batteries. And if they were alkaline batteries, that wouldn't necessarily be a good thing. If you left it running with a beefy power supply and alkaline batteries in, there's a chance that the alkaline batteries may explode when they pressurized inside. That's exciting. So I've done some voltage tests in this. Uh, I tested it at 5 volts and it draws about 200 milliamps. I tested it at uh, the sort of the normal running voltage of uh, nickel metal hydride cells, 3.6 3 volts for three of them, and it was about 80 milliamps, so less than half the current uh, on the nickel metal hydrides. But they should last for ages. Uh, how long would they last? Let's uh, assume we were using a set of 2,000 milliamp power cells. 2,000 milliamp hour divided by the 80 it's drawing equals a runtime of a full day on those uh, cells before it starts tailing off. And if I've not destroyed this by the end of this video, it's, it's possible it might get destroyed, then I'll uh, put in the bench power supply and I'll gradually turn the voltage down because the LEDs in here all appear to be in parallel. They don't seem to have their own resistors as far as I can see. I, I could be wrong. But um, as it turns down, it gets very mottled looking. They're not very matched voltage wise. So let's take a look at the construction of this. Now, before I open this up, let's bring the notepad in. And I'll draw you a typical profile of this stuff because we've already taken the main stuff to bits. So it's got a sort of channel at the bottom that is uh, just bright white. And then into it is laid a sort of like a fill that comes out to the curved top that the lights spread out. And inside is a section of LED tape with the LEDs pointing sideways. That's why they can, because the LEDs pointing sideways into this, it diffuses it. You don't see the points of light so easily. But then there's also in some of them a clear core of plastic there to basically act as a sort of light guide. And then it's sort of, by the time it's bounced about inside this white case, it then 
creates a very diffused, even glow over the surface. It works very well. The main stuff basically has the arrangement whereby you've got the two bus bars running along the tube and the connect sections that you can get at huge lengths and it's roughly every meter uh, in this uh, 240 volt version probably half meter in the 120 volt version uh, it taps onto that and there's a slight gap and, and the gap isn't really noticeable in normal use but uh, when you look from the back, you can see a sort of channel, not in the back of this because this is just a solid plastic frame, but when you look at the back of the... Uh, hold on, I'll bring it back up again. When you look at the back of this, you can see a channel with a sort of line in here. And it's hard to see when it's not lit, but when it's lit, you can see the distinct gap and a mark, as, and that's the point that you cut it. Not while the power's on, though. And it means you can cut it every multiple and then you can push the, the metal spikes in with the correct polarity which uh, you can't really get wrong in this type of stuff because of its arrangement. Uh, and then it's just fed by a rectifier, it's very very simple. So let's uh, take a closer look at this because at the moment I'm seeing that this has there's a hard plastic uh, end cap here and they've basically started there, they've sat the rope light again against it and then they've zigzagged it and they've laid it into the channel and then they've tucked it down here so let's see how they made their connection. Let's uh, bring a suitable screwdriver. Actually, I can use my little set of screwdrivers here. So if I unscrew this, a little cap comes off, and there's hot melt glue in there, lots of hot melt glue. This is where I'm going to break it. Uh, let's try and break that hot melt glue. Let's get that little Arduino that's trying to invade the scene out of the way. So I've got the hot melt glue here that's kind of just tacking everything into place. It's also acting as a strain relief of the cable. That is really well stuck in. There is a risk I may actually destroy this. Oh no, it's actually come out. It's come out and there it goes. And this is just sat in. It's not uh, glued into the frame. Let's just lift it all out then. Let's see how easy it is to put back in afterwards. They do these in various styles. They've got lightning bolts, and they've got clouds, and uh, they've got the word love in a very sloppy manner that just relies on the fact they can't really, unlike Neon, you can't dip down with this stuff. It really is just a flat surface. But let's power this up while it's out like this. I can actually see the end LED there. Is that LED chopped right off or, uh, hold on, where's the battery pack? Uh, no, it is lighting. So I don't know if you can see that. Let's try and zoom in. Hopefully this will be a proper focal position. There is the LED tape. It's kind of, is it loose? Yeah, it is loose in there. And in this case, they've not got the clear, they've actually just relied on it going into the diffuse material, but it's more or less the same construction. And I'm guessing you could probably cut it on every section of that. None of the light is really coming through the side here. Oh, there is a bit of light coming through. Uh, and it's showing, hold on, I shall mark it with a pen, what I can see here. So I'm going to just mark, I can see an LED there, 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 there. there. So that's roughly the spacing. The spacing is roughly about uh, 10 millimetres. Uh, between, which is about three-eighths of an inch, I would say, between each LED along this strip. And I'm guessing it really is just a parallel array of LEDs from the way the intensity changes when you run the intensity down. And to the end here... Ah, they've split it open. Yeah, look at that. You can... Oh, right, OK. I've just gone completely off screen there, haven't I? I probably have gone off screen. I think I may have to go and check the video footage at, that I've not gone completely off screen there. I'm a bit concerned about that. All right, okay, t t I'm going to check. Okay, I've checked and I was not off screen, so that's fine. Um, 
The main thing I wanted to there, I wanted to make sure that you'd seen that the, the spacing of the LEDs here and it was visible. So this is just an LED tape with just one continuous parallel array of LEDs along it. And they've got the little uh, solder points in each one. You can cut it at every position. I'm going to snap this right off, haven't I? And they have just, they've slit it. They've taken a knife and they've slit it along just under the, the translucent material. And then it looks like they've slitted it on the... Uh, the line of the actual the bottom here. So that's how they've gained access to get that solder connection in. That's simple. It's logical. And they do this in a variety of colours. They offer them in pink, red, warm white, and blue, I think, are the main colours in all the different shapes. Uh, and I have to say, you know, it's, pre it's pretty neat. It looks the part. So let's try and get that back into the frame and see what it's like to be working as a Chinese assembly worker putting these together. So you'd butt it up to the end like this and then fold it round, get it in. Of course, it has been kind of pre-shaped for him by some other person, but that's OK. It looks as though it probably goes in quite easily. Yeah, that's probably quite easy to put in the factory, though. I wonder how much wear and tear it puts in their hands doing this all day long. And then bend that right round, tuck it down to the connection down there. And that is it. That's not bad. It's quite a simple construction. Then the, the little box goes on really just to hide everything under there. That's all right. It's quite neat. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to uh, finish this video off by... Pause the video momentarily and then taking the auto exposure off so that as I turn the voltage down, I'm going to put it on the bench power supply. And as I turn it down, you'll see the, that the LEDs are not particularly well matched in this. You know, they do sort of start getting a bit mottled looking when it gets to the end. So I'll do that right now. So this is starting at 3.6 volts. So I'm going to gradually just nudge it down here. Uh, 3.1 volts. Ah, uh, you can see the pattern getting in there now, can't you? And it's going to get more and more sort of mottled. And at that point, you can see that there really is quite a, a significant four voltage mismatch between the LEDs because that is very mottled looking. But this is way down at 2.6 volts. This is below the point that you'd normally let it run. Um, and it, it, as soon as you get up, well, looking by the naked eye here, as soon as it, it gets up to about this intensity, it's starting to look, well, as it is in the camera, it's starting to look very even. And that's at bang on three volts. So uh, at three volts, what is the volt? The current, the three volts, it's 30 milliamps. That's all right. So, you know, you could run it off quite a, a low power supply here. But yeah, you know, overall, it's quite nice. It's quite a smart visual effect and it's very, it looks very linear and it's, the fact they've got it in this moulded frame means that it's just easy for them to slot in. It does give that very neat neon effect, uh, quite a low price. I should mention this cost about 10 American dollars. Um, and I shall try and remember and put a link, an eBay search link in the description of this video so you can sort of find all these listings and compare them. So um, yeah, pretty neat. I quite like this.